Welcome back. In this tutorial, you will learn about the various combined modes utilized in 3D modeling projects and how the various mode settings affect the appearance of your 3D models. Since these settings are so important, I want to make sure you fully understand what they do and how to use them before we create any more 3D projects in upcoming videos. To begin, create a new file with a width of 12 inches wide, 15 inches high, and one inch thick. Set the Z0 position to the material surface, the XY datum position to the bottom left, modeling resolution to very high, and material to Canadian maple. Next, tile the 2D and 3D views vertically and select the modeling tab. Analogous to layer one, being automatically created by the software for any 2D objects we wish to introduce. A level called Level 1 is automatically created for any 3D objects. The levels are listed in the Components panel beneath the Modeling Tools. Selecting, organizing, and creating levels works similar to performing those same actions with layers that we learned in a prior tutorial. Before we can learn about the combined modes, we need some 3D models to work with. Go to the Clip Art tab, select the Clip Art folder, and then the Panels and Shields folder, and choose Panel 4-2. This will open the model and center it in the workspace. Rotate the model 90 degrees, then go back to the Modeling tab, and notice that the model has been added to Level 1. Now, go back to the Clip Art tab, select the Clip Art folder, and then select the Objects and People folder, and then choose the Carver's Tools 50435A. The model opens in the center of the workspace, and in the Modeling tab, notice it is added to Level 1 above the Panel Model. Let's resize the models to utilize most of the workspace area. Using the Set Size tool, and keeping the link XY box checked. Change the height of the panel to 14 inches and the height of the carving tools to 8 inches. Let's change to the 3D view and have a look at the composite model. The pale colored rectangle that the model is attached to represents the modeling plane. If you go to the View drop-down menu, notice that Draw Modeling Plane is turned on by default. If you turn it off, the pale colored rectangular modeling plane is removed in the 3D view. Turn it back on and turn on the Select Material block. You now see where the modeling plane and 3D model are positioned in the material. We can change the position of the modeling plane, however, when we create our toolpaths. In order to understand this, let's quickly jump over to the material setup in the CAM section of the software. By changing the settings in the Model Position and Material section, you can change the location of the modeling plane in the material. I point this out now only so that you can have a better understanding of what the modeling plane actually represents. The modeling plane simply represents the plane in the material parallel to the XY plane, where the bottom of the composite model is positioned in the material. Now that I've explained these concepts, let's move on to the combine modes. There are four easy ways to access the combine mode. Select the component and right-click it in the component panel. Select the component and right-click it in the workspace. Select the component and use the component properties tool. Or put the component in transform mode and click the small blue box to bring up a floating panel that allows you to select a combined mode. Using any method of your choice, notice that five combined modes are available. Add subtract, merge, low, and multiply. We are only going to discuss the first four modes. The multiply mode 
will be addressed in a future tutorial when we learn how to place a 3D model in a dished recess. Turn off the visibility of the carving tools, leaving only the plaque visible. As we go through the various modes, keep in mind that the combined mode of a component applies to the component directly below it in the same level. Since there are no other components, the only combined mode that will make a change to the model in this case is the subtract mode. Change the mode to subtract and notice what happens in the 3D view. The model is subtracted from the modeling plane and the highest point in the add mode now becomes the lowest point in the subtract mode. Looking at the 2D view and comparing the grayscale images, the subtract mode image is analogous to a photographic negative of the add mode. The depth of cut of a 3D model is directly proportional to the level of darkness at any point in the model. By turning off the modeling plane in the view menu, you will more easily see the result. The other modes give the same result as the add mode. Let's reset the combine mode back to add and turn on the visibility of the carving tools. As the combine mode of the carving tools are set to add, that model will add to the top of the plaque component located immediately below it in level one. If you turn off the visibility of the plaque component, notice that the carving tools move so that they add only to the modeling plane. Turn the visibility of the plaque component on and change the combine mode of the carving tools to subtract. The carving tools will now be subtracted from the plaque component in the same way the plaque component was subtracted from the modeling plane earlier in the video. Now let's change the combine mode to merge. The carving tools component is no longer visible, but we know it's still there since its outline can be seen in green. Remembering from the last tutorial that green areas of a selected model represent areas hidden by another component obscuring it, we conclude that the plaque is completely obscuring the carving tools component. So what exactly does the merge mode do? I like to think of the merge mode in terms of high points. The software will change the composition of the model so that only the highest points of the components merged comprise the new model. Since the plaque component is thicker than the carving tools component, the pixels of the plaque component are always higher than the pixels of the carving tools component. So the new composite model looks like the plaque component. If we look at the plaque component height, it measures 0.4346 inches, but the height of the carving tools measures 0.3281 inches. Let's add a base height of 0.4346 inches to the carving tools component and observe what happens. We obtain a model that looks identical to what we obtained when we set the combined mode of the carving tool component to add. Changing the base height to 0.25 inches, we see a merger of the two components such that only the highest area of the merged components comprises the new 3D model. Play around with the various settings on your own to get a thorough understanding of how this mode works. Change the base height of the carving tool component back to zero inches and set the combine mode to add to get us back to our original composite model. Once you understand the merge mode, the low mode should be easier to understand. Think of the low mode as a merge low mode. Rather than merging components using the highest points of the components, this mode merges components using the lowest points of the components. Since the carving tool component is thinner than the plaque component, what would you expect to happen if you change the combined mode of the carving tools component to low? Without changing the setting, think about it for a few minutes. Imagine both components placed on the modeling plane and only the lowest points of the combination being visible in the 3D view. Hopefully, you can visualize the entire carving tool component placed on the modeling plane 
and being completely surrounded by the plaque component immediately outside of the carving tool component boundary. Let's see if we're right. Change the combine mode of the carving tool component to low and examine the composite model in the 3D view. Voila! Exactly as we expected. In the same way we can change the combine mode of individual components, combine modes also apply to individual levels. In this example, the combine mode of level 1 is automatically set to a default mode of add when creating a new project. But the mode of any level can be changed in the same way a component's combine mode can be changed. A level's combine mode dictates how that level will combine with the level below it. I hope you now have a good understanding of how combine modes work. In our next tutorial, we'll learn more about adjusting our 3D models so that we can more easily move forward in creating awesome 3D projects. If you like this video, please support my efforts by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel, and clicking the notification bell so you can watch my next video as soon as it becomes available. See you next time.